Let's do some weathering now with um, our MIG production oils. I've put some black on some tin foil, some wash brown and some German orchid on our uh, cling film here. Basically it acts as like a bit of a palette. And what we're going to do is we've got um, some MIG production thinners for washes. Okay, I've poured in a bit into this little empty pot here just to keep our thinners nice and clean in that pot okay so we can get this dirty if we need to um, and what we do we just get some of these thinners down okay and we can start a bit of a um, a bit of a mixing process so what we want to do is we want to make a streak on say um, our flaps here okay because our flaps is where we're going to get like oil coming out because it's a moving part and everything so let's start with some of that orchid color here that kind of looks a bit like oil and we can just put a bit on there i mean maybe that's a bit too thin going on there so maybe let's get a paintbrush out a nice small one Okay, and we're just making a bit of a streak on here, and it does it does look a bit of a mess. Let's bring you right in. Yeah, it does look a mess, but that's not where the magic happens, okay? So we're just getting that on there. And what we want is a flat, um, a flat paintbrush, okay? Something like a size two, flat paintbrush. And what we're going to do is the process is just to nicely um, get some of our thinners out of our little empty pot onto the brush okay <clears throat> and we want to kind of not have the brush shall we say fully loaded with thinner so a bit onto our um the kitchen paper towel and then we just give it one quick stroke okay like so and that starts the blending process off and then we want to clean our brush you know the key to this is to clean your brush clean your brush clean your brush okay keep cleaning and cleaning and then you and basically you just want to keep you know just brushing to the sides of our streak our oil streak here and we just want to keep cleaning our brush keep dipping it in the thinners you know and keep you know, making your brush not soaking in thinner so you want to kind of dip it on your you know soak it out onto your um, kitchen towel and you just want to keep playing with it and forming it into a nice neat well a nice um, weathering streak okay like so just keep playing with it as I'm doing keep cleaning your brush and keep trying to turn it into a nice oil streak like so okay and you know you might accidentally kill it all off and accidentally you know in one brush oops you've brushed it all away but you know start again don't worry about it you know keep practicing keep going for it and then we end up with hopefully a nice looking um, streak of oil and just like I said I've just accidentally in one brush virtually rubbed that away but not completely okay it's not a complete loss because actually um, there is a slight minor light streak still in there okay so I'm gonna leave that as it is because I have just accidentally killed it off but you know you get the picture and just to show you again we can um, literally kind of come along with our orchid colour and maybe a bit further up yeah maybe a bit further up our flap we can put a little streak there maybe we could come in and get some wash brown going as well okay and just kind of slap that in there a bit maybe even a bit of black you know really kind of make a bit of a mixed iggledy piggledy kind of uh, thing going on we can again you know let's show you again just so you know what's going on nice clean flat brush okay dry the access off onto your um, kitchen paper towel and one quick streak just to get the whole process starting and keep cleaning off that brush making sure your brush is clean so that you're literally just rubbing and basically cleaning it into a nice streak coming at it from both sides just to get that nice neat streak okay keep cleaning that brush 
being careful not to kill it off like I've done the last time and almost did then and then but I think we've got a half decent streak going on here sometimes I kind of um, can't help keep playing with it sometimes you just need to know when to stop and just let it be before you completely rub it basically wipe it away Right, so there we go we've got a streak going on there and we've still got a little one going down there and you could probably see that on camera let's bring you out okay as you could see you know we've got this nice um, sort of a black streak going there we've got a little one still going here um, and that is what you want to do you want to just keep doing that all over the model you know nice and realistic okay you want to get it where your flaps are slats um, engine parts you know uh, panels that are have access to the engine area or something anywhere and look at reference photos okay if you look at reference photos you might find that some aircrafts have you know certain areas say underneath where oil drips down and then flows across the actual aircraft you know look at those reference photos to see where you get them streaks and get them nicely in there you know using that nice technique so I'm gonna carry on um, applying these streaks nicely to get this look in nice and cool right here we have um, our exhaust area okay it's nice and shiny as you can see all shiny and everything um, because we haven't put anything on it what I've done is if you remember when we did our recessed panel line wash okay where we mix like some black and um, brown wash and we mixed and we thinned it down basically to make this nice wash what I did is I poured it into this little empty cup uh, pot just so I might use it use it later and lo and behold I can use it later um, basically I can get the same wash that we use for our recessed panel lines and just paint on a wash okay just on nice and carefully our exhaust area now this isn't how it's going to end up and how it's going to end up being finished. This is just the first process, the first stage of just getting this looking, you know, pretty dirty and everything. Like so. Right, so there we go. We've got a nice bit of dirt on this now. So that is that. Now I'll get back to you with some more weathering right we basically got all the pieces on here I've even um, applied our little area and tenor thingy majiggy going on there and um, there's another one just underneath here just there so all our pieces are on so you've got to be careful now that you don't kind of knock this and break it okay but we are at the last stages so <clears throat> you know you haven't got to be careful for long now uh, whacking in our airbrush thinners by Vallejo and we want to kind of get quite a bit in here because we want to do the last stage <coughs> excuse me of post shading so we've got as you can see just a nice amount of uh, thinners in there and we just want to come along and add uh, one, two, three, four, about five-ish drops of black. So, as you can imagine, we are pretty damn thin, okay? Because there was quite a bit of thinners in there, and we've only just dropped in five drops, right? So we're a really, 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 really thin, very, very transparent paint mixture that we've got here. We've done this so as we don't ruin the model basically and we are talking some nice light final bits of post shading so let's check our flow let's probably blast through a bit <coughs> okay so we've got a nice mixture because sometimes you have that bit of paint remember down in the needle end okay blow that through so you know that everything's all nicely consistently mixed in the cup so Coming back to this, our flow is looking good. Now you just want to get it so you get that bit of a biting point, okay? So we're just getting it, so we're getting our bit of a biting point. And 
Okay, I've just made a mistake, admittedly. I've basically not got my biting point um, quite so quickly. So, showing you the mistake I've just done, which was, plain and simply, I've had a bit of spider in here, which you probably can't see because our paint was so thin, right, our paint was just so thin that um, it hasn't really left much of a mark, okay, it hasn't really spidered up that bad, but we can get a wet cotton wool bud, okay, and we can just rub at it a bit, just to get rid of that nasty bit of spidering we did, which we can't really tell that much, because as I say, um, <clears throat> we are so thin so i'm just going to take off the um guard okay just zoom you out a bit i'm going to take off the guard i'm going to make sure the end's clean because sometimes you know that can be one of the reasons why you can't quite get your your biting point is you know your needle's not quite clean so i've just given the needle a clean okay and now i'm playing around trying to get my biting point off the model to make sure i get it so i'm feeling quite good now and as you can probably see I've just targeted our um, slats, our flaps and um, those kind of areas you really want to kind of give them that little bit of an extra darker post shade in those areas where there's moving parts and everything because that is where um, you know the dirt's going to build up and that's where you want to kind of see the dirt and grime um, <clears throat> so I've picked out those areas and I'm just doing some uh, elevators at the back here as well. Just following that recessed panel line and making it just that bit darker. And the same just on our tail as well. Nice little area there. Um, and the next thing as well is uh, exhaust. Right, the exhausts, okay, we need to darken these up. Right. Although our wash has done a nice job kind of dulling them down and making them look more grimier um, than just plain silver, we still need to give it that bit of a, a nice, um, you know, exhaust black spray. And while we're kind of like darkening them up, giving them a bit of a spray, we can sort of flick forward to make that um, exhaust trail effect that goes down the side. Right, so we might want to just pick this up and get underneath as well because we don't want it to be nicely made all dark and stuff on top without the underneath done. And as I say, just get that bit of an exhaust trail going on. Right, and that looks quite good. And again, we'll go this side again. Now, as I say, because we're so nice and thin and the paint's so nice and transparent, you're probably going to have to go over it a few times, make a few passes, because it's so thin. Which is, okay, might be a bit annoying for some, but, <clears throat> you know, it's better than coming on with a thick paint and blast bang, it's all black, right? We just build it up very, very, very lightly so that we don't make, we don't ruin, you know, all this nice work that we've done. So, I think that's pretty good for the, our... Maybe a little bit more of an exhaust trail. All right. Okay. <coughs> yeah. Nice bit of an exhaust trail there. Um, <coughs> coming back to the wings, okay. <coughs> we've got our. Um, MGs that are actually in the wing so we want to give these a bit of a flick as well just to kind of you know show that kind of gun barrel um, I don't know what it is the, the, the you know when they fire all the nasties that come out of there okay to show that they've been used All right, so we give them that little bit of a, a flick, and the way you do the flick thing, <coughs> okay, is you're basically pushing down the trigger for air, and you basically come in, um, I'll kind of show you maybe on here, you are just, you're starting with the needle pull in the pull back position, and then you go forward, and as you go forward, you come off the trigger, okay, so you've got the trigger down, 
and back so you've got paint and air coming out and as you flick forward you come off the trigger both um, bringing the trigger up and bringing it um, back to the um, forward position so you get this um, nice sort of line to it okay which looks like a nice bit of a streak so we'll do that to this side as well <coughs> you know down for air pull back for paint and as you streak forward you bring the um, trigger back up and you bring it forward okay and you've got to do it really really fast to get that really nice quick gun barrel um, streak <coughs> And as you can see, we've got those just in there. Do not go nuts, okay? I know a few people have done that kind of thing and they go nuts. I've done it, to be honest with you, in the past as well. And it just looks a bit strange when you've got these massive um, streaks of gun barrel dust and stuff going right down the wing and it looks like you've been firing the MG all day or something continuously. Um, <clears throat> next thing I like to do as well is just on the um, nose, where our propeller is just give that a blast okay just to kind of do a general quick blast of that paint going that way to kind of blend in the nose section a little bit um, also is the decals now the decals haven't been um, post shaded at all okay because basically we've done our bleaching our post shading and everything and then we put the decals on so the decals haven't had any post shading or any kind of real weathering so i like to come along and just give a quick you know quick blast around where the decal is just to kind of take the shine take the dull in the, um, take, make it a little bit duller and a little bit dirtier the actual decal and it's just a quick blast with this very transparent black right um, <clears throat> so you're not really kind of doing any kind of coverage it's so transparent it just kind of dulls down your decals a bit so they're not too in your face looking so clean while the rest of the model is looking nice and weathered up now we want to do underneath as well so I'll just show you again you know get your flaps and your slaps just give them a little bit of an extra seam to just like so so you just bring them out maybe some um, air intakes here give them a little bit of a something you know uh, at the back of here with our elevators a nice quick bit there you know nice quick it's easy um, <clears throat> I'm trying to be careful actually because I've put that in so let's get a bit of polystyrene so we don't actually break this when we turn this upside down hopefully that'll do it yeah that'll do it right and i want to do my flicks underneath as well so it all looks you know all in looks the same both top and bottom yeah remember the flicks it's down for air <coughs> back for paint and as you flick across you quickly um, bring the trigger forward and bring the trigger up so you've got no paint and no air coming through as you flick across and it just gives you that nice pointy streak right and I've just kind of lightly done that as you can hopefully tell we've just got those bits of black that just kind of met that bit of a streak um, and we can basically give the front of our nose again another quick blast just to make sure you know all that's kind of blending in um, maybe give our exhaust another a bit of a go because they're not as dirty as say the top and right that looks good for underneath just bringing the top up so I mean that was a nice last bit of post shade I mean I suppose the one last thing you could possibly do as well is maybe pick out maybe one or two panel lines really getting close And maybe just make the one little bit of a panel line there a little bit darker uh, you know just kind of pick out just certain areas where you might want to just give it a little bit more of dirt 
um, than normal okay just one or two areas and it just adds that bit of a randomness to it by having that little odd something going on okay hopefully getting some camera I'm just picking out a panel line and I'm just very carefully making this panel line a bit more dirty and grimy than all the rest so basically you've got like that little patch of really riffy panel line going on. <clears throat> okay, but don't go nuts, you know, a little, you know, two, three places maybe on the model, maybe on top, and then maybe um, you might want to underneath the one, very kind of patchy bit of work, say. So we've got a bit of a patch there of dirt and grime. Right, <clears throat> so that is our final stage of post shading. So let's clean this out, which shouldn't be that hard to clean out because it was quite a thin mixture. Okay, um, so we tip it up, well, give it a bit of a quick blast, then tip it upside down with a rag in there. Okay, let gravity bring all the bits and nasties this way end. Um, rather than have it go through all your needle end and have all bits go through that way. All right. Want to get our guard out uh, wherever that's gone. I've lost my guard to my paintbrush thing. Airbrush, sorry. All right, that, that, there it is. Okay. Keep that on. Okay. So just put that to one side. And what we're going to do now is we're just going to crack on. Don't mess about. Um, <coughs> and try something new. Right, so little talk about putting a matte coat on. What I used to do in the past, which um, I've changed on what I use now because basically I found something that just seems a hell of a lot better. Now, what we have here is what I used to use in the past, which is the extra acrylics, flat varnish, uh, water-based acrylics by Hanans. It cost about, well, five pounds a pot I think or four pounds a pot okay somewhere in that region for about a hundred mils and what you used to do well what I used to do and what you've probably seen in other videos was you crank up your compressor um, way up there to as high as you possibly can get it like 50 60 psi and you pour this stuff in neat and because it's a little on the thick side because you, you, you because it's thick shall we say you need that high pressure okay because really I mean paint can be as thick as it wants if you've got enough air pressure to blow that out you can blow out pretty much anything um, and that's what you need to do with this you need to rack up that air pressure so it actually has the pressure to blow out this bit of a thick paint um, which is you know the flat varnish um, and basically you sprayed it on the model and it gives you a really nice matte finish um, however what I did find with this stuff is <coughs> Because you're blasting it out at such a high air pressure, you do kind of get a vortex thing going on. The paint does dry really, really quickly. And in places, you can get a really mega, mega rough surface, which in some cases is a bit OTT. Um, for example, here on the fuselage section, if you were spraying, say, the wing section, okay, so you're spraying this wing section, and what will happen is the vortex would blow right up against our fuselage section in here and what you'd end up with is this really really kind of rough surface um, really really rough and matte surface and um, that's what I used to use but then I've kind of experimented a bit more and trying to improve the hobby and my techniques and stuff so um, I've looked in as you can imagine <coughs> Right, the Windsor & Newton's um, um, Artistics Acrylic Matte Medium. Um, <coughs> basically with this stuff, shall I just show you actually, because I do think it's a lot better and I'm just going to crack on and show you. Uh, really, I can't remember what finish I used, I think it was X20A last time I used this, but it seems to... Um, shall we say nicely get thinned down with pretty much anything so <clears throat> with my pipette okay we're gonna half fill 
our colour cup okay because we want to go for a bit of a 50-50 mix <coughs> now here's the one side of this new matte medium I used that you might not like Let's make sure I've got a clean paintbrush right. the side that you probably won't like is how thick it is which if you can kind of get your head around how thick it is actually this is going to be a bit of a money saver and it is in my opinion a lot better as a matte as a matte varnish than using the uh, <coughs> the flat varnish by extra acrylic so it comes out really really thick okay we're, we're, we've got a nice real thick uh, matte medium going on here all right as you can see looks all like um, worms going in there but give it a mix okay might start off looking a bit there at first but you keep mixing at it and it does actually mix right down real nice okay so you've just got to give it a bit more of a mix than you normally would uh, say a normal you know 50 50 mix of paint and thinners which as i say you know get your head around there and you've got yourself really really nice um, matte varnish then <clears throat> right, so that's looking good now, I think. Just give it a little bit more. Make sure it's all good, and that's looking good now. So, let's do a little bit of spraying. Let's make sure our flow's all good. <clears throat> and as I say, we don't need to have such a high air pressure because we've thinned it down. And what we're going to do is we're just going to spray this on there nice matte coat like so and I'm just putting on a nice light coat first right nice light, light coat first and then we can kind of you know as I remember if you remember you know you put that nice first quick misty coat on and then you can kind of come in with a proper coat after that just helps everything kind of stick better when you put your coats of paint on I always like this stage this is the stage where you know because everything's been glossed so much that it doesn't quite look right but you put this matte coat on and then that's it you know you're seeing your model for what it is then all your hard work you know what's going on okay so that's had a nice <coughs> quick light coat don't forget your leading edges don't forget your propeller in some ways it probably wouldn't be such a bad idea to spray your propeller separately on say a um, some tweezers just to make sure you get it completely all over there we go put that to one side Right, now I'll spray the um, the underside off camera just to kind of show you. Now, <clears throat> as you can see, you know, no high pressure. I'm looking at this now and that's had a nice little coat on and I'm not getting that nasty vortex, really rough matte surface. It is actually looking really nice, evenly matte all over and you know I do like it I mean maybe another coat of matte just to make sure we get rid of all this um, glossiness to it because it's almost slightly on the satin side right, so as a bit of a product review for this um, Windsor & Newton matte medium I've got to say, it is really, really good and worth buying. Which, you know, I am wanting to look into um, looking at like their gloss version and everything as well. But to sum this up, right, you've got 250 mils here. I think this cost me about 10 pounds, right? 10 pounds. 
for 250 mils compared to paying four or five pounds for 100 mils, right? So you get, and let's face it, I mean, you saw how thick that was. You could really thin that down. So in some ways you could say this is actually 50 mils, right? So as you can say, a heap load cheaper and you know, apart from like the mixing side of it, you know, I think it was a hell of a lot easier to use and a hell of a lot of a nicer, better, much more smoother, neater, professional matte finish to the whole model. Um, and not only that, I mean, don't don't quote me on this one, okay? But they do do a UV matte version, okay? Which is some sort of UV protection, okay? So. Um, as I say, don't hold me to this, but you know how um, if you put a model in the sun for too long, say, you leave it in Direct the sunlight, sun. give it a, you know months, years, whatever, it's going to go yellow. And, you know, hopefully, you know, when I look at this UV version for the mat, hopefully we can have something that kind of protects your model from UV rays. So, I'm going to, you need to let this dry now, because you don't really want to be touching it. Although it does look dry and it feels dry, you know, you still just want to give it that bit of time to actually dry. Right, virtually at the finish stage, and it's really looking good. After that nice matte varnish, we was able to <coughs> remove the, um, the masks, okay? And you can just nicely see in there, um, just about, I mean, you can see, um, the photo etch seat belts and just a bit of the display but really the photo etch in all honesty if you're gonna have the canopy closed like i have you probably don't need to go that far because i'm not really seeing um <coughs> in there enough to actually you know show off the photo etch so um if you do this have canopy open yeah get photo etch if not if you're gonna have it closed forget about it so what we're going to do we've got this tiny little final little part that just goes on here which is one of our clear bits okay and what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and place it on it is kind of easy to place on than some of these can be and that's basically nicely in place so what we can do is with our blade and actually let's bring you in we okay where are we we're over here all right <coughs> Okay, we can just position it and level it up with a blade, right? And then a real tiny drop of our Tamiya Extra Thin Cement. Should hopefully get that into position, but it's just popped up a little bit, so let's pop that back down. I don't want those little white bits, whatever they are, on the model. Okay, I don't think I've got enough Tamiya Extra Thin on that, so I'm going to come in again. Okay, and pop, there we go, that should do it. <coughs> right, so that's a nice clear part on top. Then, the last little thing, there is supposed to be a clear part that goes underneath. Um, let's just get my little thing here because I don't want to bend or break my um, antenna at the top there. Right, let's bring you in so you can see. Right, there's this little um, <coughs> hole here. Um, this here is like an indicator light or something and um, basically you need to put a clear part in here what I've done is I've painted it silver inside but instead of putting this clear part in what I'm going to do is a nice lovely trick that I like to do wherever you can possibly do it because I just think it looks great when you can and that is some of our blah, 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 uh, micro uh, crystal clear plain simply cut uh, uh, um, Oh, I forgot the toothpick. Sorry, getting my words muddled up. Get a bit on the end of your toothpick, okay, and you just want to put it inside this little hole, okay, that's in there. And I think you can just see how that has just got gone on. I think we can put another blob in there. Right, and that looks all white now, okay, but what's going to happen is that will dry as it says on the tin, crystal clear.
clear okay it will look like glass which is great so it looks a bit uh, at the moment and you want it to be the last thing you do on a model because you can be you could have done this earlier and you could be gluing this on gluing that on you touch it once bang that's it okay i like to leave it right to the last the last thing you do and then you can just leave your model to nicely dry before say going off and taking some pictures or something so that now will be left to dry the clear crystal clear will dry crystal clear and that is basically it, i think so to sum up <coughs> this kit by um tamia okay let's zoom you out a bit Ooh, not too far okay i mean here's the kit all right it's a tamia um 148 scale super in spitfire mark one which from what research i've done uh tamia is like the best mark one you could get anything like i think like the mark sixes or nines or tens or whatever those ones upwards apparently i think has it excuse me has a gary or Eddard or something don't quote me on that but i'm thinking that the mark one the tamia you know is the bee's knees the best one and after building it i can see why it is a absolute cracking kit because <clears throat> sometimes you build a model and it takes you ages maybe you've done what i've just done which was a big one in 30 second scale f4 phantom uh, with loads of aftermarket parts and you put all that work into it and um although it ends up great you can sometimes you just want to kind of chill out with your next build and build something that's quick that's easy no major filling sanding you know no loads of aftermarket parts you just want something that's going to go together really quick and easy you know and this is one of these kits because you know it just fit together like a glove i literally hardly put any in fact you know what i didn't put any kind of the green putty or any kind of that filler the only putty i used was the vallejo um, plastic putty which was just kind of tidying up just a little bit here and there it really doesn't need anything major filling and sanding um, decal wise i mean even the decals you know there's not many decals that you get with a kit so the deckling was quite quick and easy you know it's one of those kits that is just as i say it's quick it's easy and it goes together like a glove but at the same time you've got all this really nice professional level of recessed panel lines and rivets and all that kind of going on to still give you a professional looking spitfire um <clears throat> the only downside i've really got to say about this kit is the decals um, I'm not really a big fan of the Japanese decals because um, plain, plain and simply I like using my micro solen set and micro solen set is good for European decals and they go on really nice but these Japanese decals they're thicker and because they're thicker you have to come in with their nuclear uh, chemical waste deckling solution that just wrinkles it up like mad and uh, if you put too much on you can ruin the paintwork a bit and in places you know i've had to touch up a little bit here and there because basically i put a bit too much of that mr mark and uh, mr mark setter and mr mark softener down which kind of you know as i say i had to kind of like tidy up so as i say the decals not a big fan of japanese decals but i will try and um, in the future get a good way and a proper kind of more of a tutorial on how to get those japanese decals down a bit better um, without all the fuss so as i say recommended kit cannot really beat it um, and for the price as well i think i think uh, maybe 20 quid under 20 quid i paid for this the photo which was i think like three pounds four pounds you know very cheap very quick nice easy kit you know you can't sum it up any more than that quick easy cheap uh, and goes together really nice so nice recommended kit i hope you know you've enjoyed this build because i've enjoyed it i hope you've enjoyed watching step by step if you've got any questions regarding the whole of this build you know i mean feel free to email me or shoot a, P, a post on the for uh, on the forum or something and maybe ask questions you know about how i did this maybe you want me to go over some things more okay so um you know until the next video build right my name is bobby waldron this is genesis models and i hope you've enjoyed